Thank you, Superhuman, for sponsoring today's video. There is something about an iPad that has always caught my attention when it comes to school. For me, it's a device that can take complex tasks and break them down to make you at ease. A base model is enough to get you going and even get you through a whole degree. It doesn't necessarily need to be the latest 9th gen with a keyboard and everything. Truthfully, the longer I spend time with iPads, the longer I realize that a Logitech crayon and a simple paper like sheet is enough. At school, we try to push for exceptional productivity and we try to overcomplicate the simplest tasks. We shop for the best pencils, the best notebooks just to get you through the year, and while studying computer science, I realize it shouldn't have to be like so. If you set up things the right way and allocate a budget for the tools needed, it will be enough to get you through a four year degree. And so here's how you can do it. After unboxing things up, protecting your iPad with Touch ID or a passcode, and probably even choosing dark mode, the first thing I would do if I were you is to update iOS and turn on Find My iPad. It could happen to anyone that you might leave your iPad somewhere around school. And don't worry, if this is your only Apple device, you can go on iCloud.com and locate it through any machine. After doing so, I like to make sure I have enough room on my iCloud account to back things up. And this can be your pictures, school notes, OS backups, emails, and so much more. Other than going around a display that has dark mode enabled, I usually like to enable True Tone. So my eyes get at ease by automatically changing the color tone of the screen depending on the classroom I'm at. I am fully aware that teachers can go minutes without writing on the board and it's why I like setting my auto lock to 15 minutes. This isn't by any means a 120Hz display with ProMotion, knife curve panel edges, tiny bezels all around or even a laminated feature that avoids the gap under the glass. But at 500 nits of brightness, which is close enough to the MacBook Air, it is something I couldn't care less about. It is a very reflective glass, but when it came to note taking or even watching a show while I waited for the teacher in class, it honestly just never bothered me at all. I love the accessibility that Touch ID delivers on the home button, just because Face ID isn't the best feature mostly in cold countries, and it's by far more accessible than having it on the power button. I do enjoy my wired headphones, and no, I'm not a medieval person, but it's always nice going back to not having to charge them, and not having to use these one-way speakers that are, in my opinion, the most disappointing thing about this device. When I took breaks, I often like to FaceTime people and FaceTime this year is awesome because we get this cool feature called center stage on this new camera. If you are doing school at home because of a lockdown, turns out that Zoom also supports it. It is a 12 megapixel front face camera and regardless from it being superior to the rear facing camera at 8 megapixels, I do find myself benefiting from this the most when it comes to using apps that transform pictures into PDFs. I am aware that only the first generation pen is supported on this, so we have the lightning port at the bottom, which shouldn't change your life one single bit, even with lower transfer speeds when plugging SSDs. I like to save my money a lot back when I was doing my bachelor, so Google Drive for me did the job beautifully. I am fully aware that $329 is already a lot of money for us students, and I do push you to get budget items like for example, this $20 paper-like sheet, a $90 crayon, and a nice case at $20. This pen is what I like to call a financial solution. The cool thing about it is that instead of using Bluetooth, it uses frequency pairing. So all you need to do after charging it is to turn it on and it'll miraculously work. I am mindless when it comes to the latency this iPad delivers and luckily it has nothing to do with the pen itself. I truly never cared about pressure sensitivity because I'm not an artist, I was and I still am a note taker. 
My guess would be that other than not having a bit of a dumb charging design to it and the ability to avoid it rolling off the table while studying, I think maybe you would all like to have an Apple Pencil comparison video. You can just always leave a hashtag pen for it. Don't feel overwhelmed with the amount of accessories you can get for it. This still has the old connector towards the side, meaning that you don't have access to the latest expensive Magic Keyboard. My job is to save you money, but if you really want that, Logitech do offer a combo touch keyboard for $200. It's hard for me because of what I do, but you can definitely turn this into a MacBook replacement for school. Even opting for something like this 64GB base model, it'll serve your workflow well. It definitely has for me, and I honestly think I like the civil model a bit more instead of the space gray. As someone that was rocking the Gen 1 Pro while in school, I realized that the hardware on the 10.2 inches was more than enough. I spent countless amounts of hours working to save money for a device that was just overkill for me. The trick here is to simply allow yourself to have a proper workflow where you might even be able to turn this into a mini workstation for home. The workflow that kept me motivated and productive was so simple for me. I've been making an effort to stick to a minimal amount of apps, but sometimes, good notes, Google Drive and Superhuman are not enough to make it all perfect. When it comes to note taking, the best thing you can do is to download an app like GoodNotes. For me, it was super important to be able to organize my documents, create notebooks for classes, have an overwhelming amount of customization features within your pages, and the ability to overall take cool notes. It's a bit crazy because if you write on A4 paper, you can print these with ease if you really want to. A 10.2 inch screen in my opinion is enough to write on. I do find myself using it in landscape mode rather than in portrait because it can almost mimic a letter paper size. I hate scrolling horizontally for my notes, so the best thing you can do is to scroll vertically for a smoother experience. I think it's best mainly when you decide to import that thick calculus book into your app. Of course, you can search through it. It's nice because it imports chapters automatically and you can use the toolbar to take notes on it highlight and even add stickers. When I realized that I was able to have this thick and heavy book on a tablet that only weighs around one pound, it was really hard for me to neglect the fact that my school workflow could be so much better. My biggest tip for you is to allow yourself to back up all your school work into Google Drive. Over the years, I've just found that Google Drive was the best option for me. I do pay about $2 a month for 100 gigabytes, so I allow myself to store all kinds of documents there. I can build specific folders to share with teachers, upload notes to them whenever, and I have the comfort of knowing that my notes will never be gone. My brain just functions better by having everything in one place and funny enough, I discovered that people have secret Google Drive folders where they share their class notes, exam, and tests. And it is an app that works well with Gmail. Here, my biggest pet peeve is not knowing back then that I could enhance my Gmail experience with the help of Superhuman. You see, recently I've been using Superhuman with my Gmail account to save time while writing my emails. It is very much an app that is heavily based on easy to remember shortcuts, a great UI and UX designed to guide you towards searching and composing emails, overall making emails super enjoyable. As my day progresses, I constantly get emails and this for you can be from teachers, your favorite stores, or even your Amazon packages. The shortcuts I find myself using the most are things such as trash, compose, favorite, unsubscribe, mark emails as done, or even reply to all of them. I do like scheduling my replies, so when that person wakes up the next day, I will be their first email in their inbox. I do remember hating when my teachers never replied to my emails and I had no idea of knowing whether or not they had opened it. I think this can be a useful email solution for you if you ever want to know whether your emails were read or not. If you do happen to get the keyboard, a simple command K will reveal all the shortcuts. You can type for example H and it will help you to reschedule this email as a reminder in your inbox. Personally though, because I often get the same types of emails, I do find myself using the snippets feature to write up templates so I can just send simple things like an address for example. It's funny how the simplest of things can be the best for your own workflow. For now, the monthly fee is more than worth it for the time I save with my emails and if it's something that interests you, I'll be more than glad to leave a link down below. With my three most recommended apps out of the way as a student, there is still so much more to discover. Word, Excel, and PowerPoint are apps you most definitely need in your toolbox. It's important you find a balance between these and the Google Suite because most often, people like sharing documents with Google Notes to write up things such as projects. 
To me, it's a small sacrifice having similar apps to do the same things, but at the end of the day, it's important I can always upload my work to the Google Drive. Most of my time can be spent on a browser like Safari. I don't find myself using Chrome as much anymore because I enjoy the new Apple browser. I can add cool wallpapers to it, enable reader mode, hide the status bar by swiping up on it, and tap group my study life when I have a bunch of articles. But regardless of it, it's nice being able to split views with any app really. Watching a calculus video, looking for calculus problems, all while I have good notes on the side is so clutch when it comes to doing work. It is impossible to get Netflix out of the way for me mainly because it's so easy to drag it around your screen to avoid interrupting work. Spotify is the same although I mainly use it to enjoy podcasts, and I have it as a widget along the calculator, the weather app, Google Calendar, and Google Drive. Being able to pack all your deadlines and tasks within a single app where you can share that information with things such as Superhuman is super essential for me. As for tips and tricks, there are plenty, one of them being quick text to compose maybe ideas, homework deadlines quickly and so on. You can attach a link to it if you are in class and you happen to find a good article last minute, or if you are lazy like me, you can screenshot it from the bottom corner. There is this cool three dot on top now that you can use to split your views or drag an app to the side to browse your home screen in order to split it with something else. Back then, I would have wished that there was a way to create a focused workflow, and what I really like about this is that when you turn on a specific mode, you can hide certain apps, hide notification badges, and really just deliver that quiet classroom experience so you can avoid distractions. A great way to get rid of your boyfriends and girlfriends texts while in class. I used to tend to allow these hours to be my most productive ones for the day and it's why for me battery life was essential. I can tell you that from experience, if you avoid gaming of course, this little thing can deliver roughly about 8 hours if you constantly use it with all the things we discussed, which overall eliminates the need to have to charge it within your school day. Look, as a tech YouTuber, my goal here is to allow you guys to save money for your needs. Making these type of videos keep me happy and keep me wanting to pursue this whole career. As my school years went on, I always wish I had discovered this way sooner. I made this video because I wish I had watched one of these back then. You really don't need the latest tech, the latest pen or even an incredible amount of money to allow school to be easier for you. All you need is a base model iPad with a pen and you'll be ready to go. If you can't find comfort within, I would be extremely happy. I hope you all have a great semester and your new year goes as planned. Take care.